Across the country, workers went on strike, adding their voices to the swelling protest movement. Thousands upon thousands willing to risk their jobs, calling for President Alexander Lukashenko to go. He tried to play matters down. 20 people decided to speak their mind, just abandoned their work and left. Their boss said, fine, go on. I have enough other people who will take your wages. These striking workers from a Minsk tractor factory were unimpressed. Their placard reads, we are not 20, we are 16,000. In the early hours of Friday, authorities released thousands of people who'd been detained during the crackdown on demonstrations. Many emerged from custody with injuries and tales of police brutality. Their stories seem to have further energized the people on the street. We are against violence. We are for peace and transparent and fair elections. We want new authorities. People are tired of waiting. 26 years of lawlessness, rudeness, insults and lies. Authorities stood by as huge crowds again assembled in Minsk on Friday evening, and some were rewarded. Moments of humanity between those demanding change and those representing the power of the state. And DW's Moscow correspondent Emily Sherwin has been monitoring developments in Belarus, and she joins us now for more. Hello to you, Emily. It's been almost a week now since Lukashenko claimed his election victory. First, he tried to suppress the protests, but now the Belarus authorities seem to be taking perhaps a softer approach. Could this be a sign that Lukashenko's grip on power is slipping? Well, judging from what we saw yesterday and the day before, the scenes that we've been seeing, it almost did look like uh, kind of scenes of victory. We've seen uh, huge crowds marching through the streets with the authorities not cracking down as they were at the beginning of the week. Protesters were going up to security forces, hugging them, giving them flowers, and the security forces also put their shields down. Um, people were outside the House of Government chanting, we will win, and shining um, lights from their telephones. So really kind of scenes of victory that we've been seeing. But on the other hand, Alexander Lukashenko um, went on TV yesterday several times, and he um, said uh, that he hadn't left the country, that he is alive, um, contrary to some of the rumors that had been circulating er earlier in the week. And he also uh, didn't look like he was was willing to go anywhere. Well, Emily, uh, the European Union, of course, has also been watching events in Belarus very closely. It's now given the green light to impose sanctions on members of Lukashenko's administration. What impact do you believe these sanctions are likely to have? Well, it sounds like these will be targeted personal sanctions. Um, apparently, they'll be against the people who were behind this crackdown that we saw earlier in the week. Now, we don't know who will be on that list yet, but it could have um, an impact, con especially considering um, that we've been seeing in the last few days kind of videos circulating on social media of various uh, current and former police officers and security forces kind of burning their uniforms, throwing away their uniforms. So we're, we've been seeing kind of Lukashenko's traditional uh, support base almost crumbling. So if then uh, these sanctions target kind of the min min middle managers, including the security forces, that could have perhaps somewhat of an impact. But this uh, the sanctions also have a huge uh, symbolic importance. Um, members of the opposition in recent days have been talking about the importance of international solidarity, and that's what we're seeing now. Well, one person that ex has expressed solidarity is Russian President Vladimir Putin. Emily, quickly, if you can, how much of an influence has Putin been so far? Well, Moscow has been actually unusually quiet in recent days, um, and that may have to do with the fact that Lukashenko and Belarusian um, state TV have been blaming Moscow for the protests. The foreign ministry then recently condemned that. 
Um, but it does seem, and I mean, the two, the two leaders in Russia and Belarus uh, will continue to be allies. They're close uh, partners. And there have been rumors on the streets of uh, Belarus that perhaps in the coming days, or fears as well, that perhaps in the coming days, Moscow could um, kind of get involved to prop up Lukashenko. Emily Sherwin in Moscow, thank you very much.